I love I love using the new year as a way to reset. You know, sometimes it can feel a little artificial, but but it can feel really nice and optimistic as well. Like you know, new year, new me, or you know, whatever people want to say about it. Um, I'm a huge fan of self care. I'm a huge fan. Um, I think you. I mean, I the card deck. I made the aggressive self care. Yep. Like I'm a fan of like aggressive, unapologetic self care. Um, you just mentioned them, so we got to say a little bit about them. You have these <laughs> cards called aggressive self care. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because sometimes we need the voice that's like like just more directive, you know, there's yeah. a, a lot of like, you know, soft voices um, in these spaces, which is, you know, of course we can have soft voices, but sometimes you just need to be bossed around of like, oh my God, take better care of yourself. Like, I can't, I can't deal with this. I love you too much. Guys, I have told you your best connections from the, come, guys, I've told you your best connections come from your best connections. This is the case with today's guest. Cynthia Trellia is a good friend of mine. She's been a big supporter of the Ripple for as many years as I've been rippling. She had uh, treated me through acupuncture a couple of times with a lower back injury and some issues that I was having with my knees. She's amazing, but she retired. And I was having some health difficulties earlier this year, reached out to her for a recommendation. And she said, I've got the perfect person. You need to meet Dr. Jenna Valentine. Jenna owns a Valentine Care. It's a holistic wellness center. Traditional healing, but modern methods is her sort of coin phrase. And Cynthia told me that you are never going to meet someone more engaged or committed to helping you with whatever you're dealing with. And boy, was she right. Jenna and I just hit it off instantly. We were rippling from the word go. And it wasn't because she was trying to push me down a certain path of treatment. She was very, very patient and understanding. Had several crazy things going on. Had several different doctors looking at certain things and wasn't getting a lot of good answers. So Jenna was very, very uh, meticulous in how she went through my blood work and evaluated some of the things that uh, she was seeing and gave me questions to specifically ask the doctors and boy, were they shocked and surprised. And it did give me a truer appreciation about how many times we are just sort of pushed one direction or the other from Western medicine. And so uh, not only was I able to come off certain medications, but I was able to make some specific adjustments along the way. And Jenna has been a part of that for the entire time. She's done such a great job. I even have my wife go into her. It's amazing. But I will say this is not a ringing endorsement or I'm not necessarily a commercial for her. But what I want to say is one of the things that I loved about her was that she just connected heart to heart, belly to belly, which we talk about on the Ripple all the time. She understands what it takes to get a patient's trust. She understands what it takes to you know, break through some of the barriers and the frustrations we often get when we are uh, generally getting blown off by our medical doctors. And she doesn't push. She doesn't prod. She focuses on whatever the area is that you need to, uh, to improve in your life. And it starts from within, right? Helping understand and appreciate your body and the, the, the power we all possess to heal ourselves in a lot of circumstances. I can't begin to tell you just how amazing she is just from being a patient, but more so a friend. She and I have really hit it off. She's an amazing entrepreneur doing a lot of great things. I'm super excited that she join, is joining us today for this episode because we're going to talk about how to get control of your physical health, but also your mental health. And she's got some amazing tips and approaches there that I think are going to really benefit everyone. So I'm super excited. So let's jump in and get to know Dr. Jenna Valentine. No, no, let's go. Excellent. All right, guys, I am super excited to have Dr. Jenna Valentine joining us for the Ripple Effect podcast. Jenna, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I actually felt like I was probably, uh, I, I went into way more detail than I normally do in this intro because I was so <laughs> excited to have you as a guest today. And ah. I have a bajillion questions, but I am so grateful that uh, you agreed to do this. We've been talking about it and we had some stop and starts on the schedule. So I appreciate your flexibility. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. And um, I I just love knowing you and I love getting the word out there. And I'm, I'm so happy to be making ripples alongside you right now. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we are, we are definitely creating some positive ripples together. That's for sure. 
Well, let me, let's start with, you know, I'm always big in the uh, sort of the origin story about who people are and how they kind of became who they are um, now. And so I'm kind of curious, can you give our audience just a little taste of who Jenna was kind of growing up, how you sort of settled on this as a career path and, and kind of what it's like to become an entrepreneur? Yeah, great questions. I, uh, I never thought I would be putting needles in people's bodies for money. If you, if you had asked me when I was young, I would have like thought you were absolutely insane. Um, I, I was always the person that was going to work with at-risk youth and I did that and it was wonderful. So youth in the foster care system, gang members, teen moms, et cetera. That was really my passion growing up, but I was always interested in Chinese medicine as well. And that happened kind of as like a rebellion. Um, my mom's version of her religion didn't work for me. And so I was like, that's it. Like, I'm like 15. I was like, I'm doing Taoism and Buddhism, like such a bad kid. So in in that, I was like, oh, acupuncture, that sounds like absolutely crazy. I would never do that. That's horrible. Like, ew, needles, scary, blah, blah. Um, so then fast forward, and I guess it took me until college to, to get the bravery up to try it. And I didn't. It was amazing. It was like this local school in LA and they were offering, there'd been some tsunami or something and they were offering free acupuncture and the money would go to a donation. And I was like a broke college student working like three different jobs. Um, and I, I was like, cool, I was trying to donate anyway. This will, at least I can get this experience. They're probably good people. And that was my first introduction to acupuncture. And I was blown away, but I was still like the girl who's going to work with at-risk youth. Yeah. And so I just kept being that person while getting acupuncture it was how my daughter was induced, um, her labor, and um, it helped me with, you know, like I had low iron for a while, and that was, you know, I was on medications for it, pharmaceuticals, and it was acupuncture that ended up helping. This is kind of back in the day. Yeah. So then when I got divorced, and I was at this crossroads, and I was able to figure out who I wanted to be now, knowing that working with at-risk youth didn't wasn't going to pay enough or be a lifestyle conducive to being a single mom, I, um, I had the chance to really follow what I wanted to do, which was acupuncture. Would, everyone who knew me, like they'd say anything. I'm like, you have to go to acupuncture. I was like upset. I was like knocking on doors. I was like a Jehovah's witness, like, like, you know, on in everyone's business about acupuncture. And I was like, wait, why don't I just be the person doing that thing that I'm telling everyone I love to do. And I haven't looked back since it's been, once my brain made that little connection, yep. um, I never looked back and it's been the best. Oh, uh, that's awesome. So, so, you know, you said that um, working with at risk youth was sort of where your passion was. Have you been able to go back and visit that a little bit through some of your treatments? Because I, I know you, you work with a wide variety of patients now. I do. Yeah. So I, I mean, I love working with um, teens and kids. They're often not as open to acupuncture as yeah. adults are just because like needles and as many times as you explain how tiny they are compared to a hypodermic like vaccine needle yeah. um it's you know a kid's mind is like i'm just gonna hedge on a no um, <laughs> which is fair i totally get that so i haven't necessarily worked with um the at-risk youth population in this role although i'm super open to it it's like yeah. you can't really go into a group home and be like i'm just gonna put needles in the kids though like they're you know it's just kind of like it's challenging there's um, probably laws against doing that too yeah, i would imagine I think, yeah, <laughs> some sort so. of policy pretty sure like frowned upon but um what i do realize is that training left me very well equipped to work with adult bodies many yeah. of whom had hard childhoods many of them who could have qualified as an at-risk youth when they were in their yeah. early teens etc and so um what I saw when I was in that world working really gave me the ability to have conversations that are really hard and hold space for really deep things. And so that has informed my work, I think, more than on paper. It's like, wait, you went from working with at-risk youth to being a doctor of Chinese medicine. Like, it feels like a weird jump. But yeah. when I actually, like, pull back and think about um, both are related to helping people and... Um, everyone has a certain amount of trauma, whether that's small T or big T trauma. Yeah. And so I'm, I feel really grateful that I was able to be in that world where there was such trauma that was so at the forefront and so thick because it really was kind of a training for the work I get to do now. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing I found when we first started working together was, you know, how, how you mentioned how the body just holds on to a lot of those yeah. really painful emotions and, you know, those mental blocks and, you know, it, your muscles have memory and, and those go deep and being able to find an alternative to be able to remove that or, or get some of those, 
you know, some of those, you know, just that bad mojo out was super enlightening for me. You know, I, I had experience. That's how, you know, I, I mentioned in the intro that I first met you was through Cynthia Trellia and she had done acupuncture uh, treating, you know, pretty um, specific injuries at a time. But I, I didn't look at that as kind of a, at the time, didn't really look at it as like a sustainable kind of process. It was something I did kind of addressed something that Western medicine wasn't really helping me with much um, and had really instant results because she was great. But then coming to you and then sort of understanding that, you know, going through this process and getting uh, getting the experience that I got out of the first appointment, it led me to want to have that second appointment really quickly because I could feel like just everything kind of shifted for me. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I would suspect, you know, that work that you did or that interest in working with the, um, you know, young person who's really gone through that challenge. Well, you know, hopefully they just grow up and we grow up and have those same traumas. We just deal with them differently now. We really do. And I, um, I mean, I also want to say the body also stores happiness and, <laughs> Yeah. attitude and you know so not all negative like, right <laughs> like, wah, wah. the body's yeah. just like hanging on to rough experiences yeah. like we're holding on to all of it and a lot of our experiences that are hard may have happened when we were pre-verbal um or they're so jarring that we just don't have the words for it so sometimes yeah. where um I, i'm a big fan of talk therapy but um i am even more of a fan of somatic work um including acupuncture for moving yeah. things that don't have words or we don't have the like the cohesive sentence of what's wrong. It's like, I just feel kind of like blah here. Yeah. You know, and you're like, okay, cool. Yep. And usually it's Chinese medicine that, that that actually makes sense. And we can, we can use specific points or herbs or techniques and actually help the body do what it knows and wants to do and support it. And we don't even need a lot of words for that, which is so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, so, you know, as, as this episode will air, uh, we have a new year upon us and we are, you know, everybody's kind of committed and focused on, I want to get, you know, my, you know, I want to lose that weight. I want to get in better shape. I want to get, take a little bit more direct control over my, you know, my physical health, but also, you know, the mental health. I wanted to just get a sense for you as to some of the things that you might suggest tips that you might suggest to people as they're starting to, you know, I've never thought of acupuncture. I've never thought mm -hmm. of cupping or never thought about kind of a holistic approach um, to taking control. But, you know, I'm here to say, you know, having seen you for the first time this past year and now having gone to you for the better part of the year, this is the best I've ever felt. Right. So I, I yeah. encourage our audience to really understand and appreciate that because at the end of the day, it, it is more than just going to the gym another, you know, time or two in a week. There's so much more that you can bring to the table. So could you give, you know, give our audience some perspective on how you could potentially guide or direct them to, to look at this as a, as a means of that self-care that you talk about? Yeah. So, um, I love, I love using the new year as a way to reset. You know, sometimes it can feel a little artificial, but, but it can feel really nice and optimistic as well. Like, you know, new year, new me, or, you know, whatever people want to say about it. Um, I'm a huge fan of self-care. I'm a huge fan. Um, I think you, I mean, I, the card deck, I made the aggressive self-care. Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of like aggressive, unapologetic self-care. Um, you just mentioned them. So we got to say a little bit about them. You have <laughs> these cards called aggressive self-care. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because sometimes we need the voice that's like, like just more directive, you know, there's yeah. a, a lot of like, you know, soft voices um, in these spaces, which is, you know, of course we can have soft voices, but sometimes you just need to be bossed around of like, oh my God, take better care of yourself. Like, I can't, I can't deal with this. I love you too much. You know, so I, just I like bought a deck me. specifically so that I could have you in my ear, even yeah. when you're not in my ear. So. <laughs> I'm going to start recording them and just sending them yeah. to you every day. Hey, um, put me on the website. I'm, I'll be the first one to say, uh, yeah, you are so great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, um, I think a lot of times we wrap up like self-care is selfish and yeah. um, we have this, and especially in our Western culture, we have this idea that rest is lazy and we have this idea like I'll sleep when I'm dead. We have all these like sayings around that, like go harder, go home. Like we really, and these are all sayings I told you when I first came to see you. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, I'm just like writing down. I'm like, what did Steve say again? Like always. I'm glad um, I could give those to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's many reasons for that. A lot of them are systemic. Yeah things that we have going on in our society and they affect 
men and women and all genders in different ways. But I, I think that one of the things we can do is kind of radically rebuff some of these messages. And we drag our bodies around as if they're our servants. And then we get mad at them when they complain to us. And that to me feels so terrible. Yeah. And I get really protective of bodies. And I get really irritated at body owners because I'm like, damn it, like you are so mean to this body that's doing so much for you all the time. And we're just like, we never thank it. We just expect it to go. We take our car in for oil changes more than we take our body in for any kind of self-care. Yeah. And then we get mad when anything goes wrong. Yeah. Um, but really like- We act shocked. Like, oh my God, how oh could this God. happen to me? Right. right. Well, and we're like, like it's been never been, thing. yeah, it's never been an issue. I'm like, yeah, but for the past however many decades, you've been slow drip destroying yourself. And yeah. now the bill has come due on the body you're going to kind of deserve now. And I, yeah. I don't mean that in a victim blaming way. Like, sure. so it's, it's both about like taking responsibility, but not blaming you for where you're at. Right. So there's, yeah. um, you want to, I want to both empower clients and recognize like you have an active role in this. So I mean, I think you know this from when we work together. I'm very much like, this is us together. This is my knowledge of Chinese medicine and your knowledge of your body. And we are both going to come to the table with solutions here. But I would, to go back to your question, I would really encourage people to, as a first step, start renegotiating their relationship with how they view self-care. Because I wouldn't say it's a luxury. I would say it's mandatory. You know, we go on the airplane and it's you put your own oxygen mask on first. And we're like, yeah, OK, OK. And then everyone uses that metaphor. And we're like, OK. And our frontal lobe's like, OK. And the rest of us is like, but I'm not going to. Like, I'm yeah. the one who's going to totally give that mask to someone else. And like, you yeah. know, we all have these like hero complexes at some point and martyrdom complexes. So I think as a first step is just start figuring out what how you view self-care and maybe giving yourself some opportunity to renegotiate how you view self-care. It's yeah. not lazy. It's not um, something only women do. It's not something only rich women who don't work do. Like it's actually absolutely necessary for you to take care of this amazing body and, um, and spirit and mind and emotional profile. We, we have to do that. We, we just absolutely, the same way you brush your teeth, hopefully, um, we have to be taking care of these bodies on the regular. And I think acupuncture and Chinese medicine is one of the best ways to do that. Yeah, I mean, when, when I started prioritizing, you know, sort of putting myself first and making sure that I was, you know, honoring, you know, the lessons that you teach, because you're really phenomenal at that when you're Thanks. with a patient, you're explaining what you're doing and why you're doing it. But at the same time, you're also saying, hey, here's how you can do this, you know, in absence of a treatment or, you know, when you really are in a pinch or you're high stress or whatever. And I remember those things really. Uh, and I take them to heart and have really applied them. And it has lowered my stress. It's lowered a good number of things that originally brought me to you in the first place. And I remember kind of going back like mid-year for my regular physician and they were like, whoa, like, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, what's happening here? It's like, well, you know, you aren't doing anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, we're, you know, you're almost all the time. It's like, you know, you go in with a complaint and they throw a, a prescription at you and, you know, you're chasing the problem as opposed to really understanding what, you know, what the genesis of the problem is, how to attack it or look at it from just, you know, multiple directions as opposed to just one, which is usually, you know, putting you on some sort of pharmaceutical and it, it was pretty telling, but, you know, I, I mentioned in the, in the introduction, how you really equipped me with a, a really patient approach to some of the issues I had going on, <clears throat> evaluating the, the blood work, getting a better understanding of what that was. And, you know, you were the only person ever to ever explain the, you know, the, you know, the, the panel that I was having taken and then giving me the right questions to ask and go back and be more informed to say, Hey, look into this ask this. These are the kinds of things that they should be telling you. Um, and, you know, it, it just became a, a different process. But the thing that really stood out to me is, which is, I think what you're really, you know, your point is you've got to take that control because nobody else is going to take it for you. Your doctor's yeah. not sitting at home tonight going, gosh, I, I wonder if Steve's doing okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, he hasn't seen me in three months or, you know, how's that prescription I, you know, I wrote for him. Uh, treating them. They, they don't care. I mean, it, I mean, they do, but at the end of the day, they're not invested in as invested in that process as you need to be as, as an individual. Yeah. And I, I think that there's, that brings up a couple things for me. One is I love this quote and I don't know who said it and I may butcher it slightly, but um, if you don't make time for wellness, you'll be forced to make time for sickness. Um, and in yeah. a world where we're like, 
so busy, so overscheduled. We glorify busyness and we, um, you know, we have all this like, there, I just don't have time to X, Y, or Z for myself. Then you get sick and you're out for what, five days, 10 days, like you definitely okay. didn't have time for that. So I would say that it's actually the time you carve out for wellness, um, making healthier choices around foods or breath work or meditation or um, getting your blood labs run. All of that is actually a really strategic like um, kind of savings account for your time and for your freedom. And if you think about like, if you retire and you're like, oh, now I'm going to travel when I retire, but you're not yeah. well, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? You're not, you're not really free then. And for me, health and wellness is one of my pillars of freedom. So sure, yep. finances is one of them, but health and wellness and then mindset is my, my kind of other one there. But um, if your body isn't healthy and your emotional profile doesn't have a certain kind of sense of equanimity, then you're not going to be free. And so for yeah. me, self-care is essential there. And there's, there's so many different things that can be driving that. I know we had talked, you know, about going into anxiety yeah. as part of this. Um, and anxiety can, you know, just to use this as an example, can come from nutrient deficiencies. It can come from food sensitivities. It can come from drinking too much coffee. It can come from drinking alcohol. It can come from eating spicy foods. It can come from um, poor gut health, which is where 90 plus um, of your neurotransmitters are developing. It can, you know, there's, it can be a pharmaceutical side effect. Like there's so many areas that can be happening. And so what you hopefully will have as a practitioner that you feel has your back, yeah. not like I, I will tell clients a lot, like I can't out acupuncture a terrible marriage. I can't do it. There yeah. isn't a needle point for like my partner treats me like crap. Um, because sometimes people can be toxins yeah. and sometimes, and I can't, I can't out acupuncture that toxin. Or if we know that you're allergic to, I don't know, um, strawberries, whatever. I don't want to always pick on gluten and dairy, even though a lot of people do have sensitivities there, but, yeah. um, and you keep eating them, then we're going to have to talk a little bit about expectation setting, you know? So like, I'll meet you wherever you're at. Yeah. Um, I know certain practitioners are like, I'll fire them if they're not compliant. And I'm like, well, I, I'm not there. I'll meet you wherever you're at. I'm like, don't yeah. tell everyone you're seeing me. Maybe you feel like you're making that. <laughs> I'll tell them you're not doing what I told you to do at home or something. Yeah. But, um, but I think, you know, for people to really start shifting this, we have a kind of a narrow focus on what it, we want one answer. We're trained to want, there should be a pill for every ill or whatever the yeah. saying is yeah. around that. Um, and we just, bodies don't work that way. We are so complex and we, our whole system is complex just in our own body. And then the way we interact with other people is complex and the culture we live in and the weather we're in and the cycle of the moon, this like infradian cycle that we never really talk about. There's so many different elements here. And, um, and I hope that people will have a practitioner that's, that's well-versed in, in kind of all of those yeah. so that we can be looking at that. Like, what do your labs show? It could just be low hanging fruit of like, you have way too many red blood cells. Of course yep. you have joint pain, you know, or yeah. not have enough red blood cells. Like you may need more iron or digestive enzymes or, you know, whatever it might look like. Um, those are kind of more low hanging fruit things. And then there's stuff about mindset. Like what are, what is the tone of voice in your head? Are you yeah. mean to yourself all the time? Um, are you shaming yourself constantly? Do you have this like nagging nitpicking voice? Like if you're anxious and you're drinking, you know, 10 cups of coffee and you're mean to yourself all day, every day, like, yeah, there's a few things that we're going to need to address from multiple angles there. And I'm a big fan of like, take out the low hanging fruit stuff first to see what's left, then address that, you know, like yeah. there's a really like nice way to do it. But I think one of the ways that I think you can really, you personally really inspire people is that you're, you listen and you implement. And you do like you do the thing. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and that's really inspiring to be like, you know, you're you're a special person, but also a regular guy who was still able to make changes that bettered your life. It's yeah. not rocket science. You know, I think I was um I was at this biohacking conference doing a I was doing I was on one of the panels and um, all these people are wearing all the wearables and doing all the tricks and the cold plunge and the all the like the sexy new things that are out there. Yeah. And I was just like 
I think we all need to chill out. Like, I yeah. think we all just need to calm down. <laughs> and, you know, so sometimes my advice is not sexy at all. It's like, breathe more and yeah. better and drink more water and sleep more, you know, yep. like be in nature. Like it's like the real basics, just like really, really basic. And and it's not a pill. It's going to be a, a shift in the way that you're living. Yeah. And, you know, I, lo I love the fact that you touched on that. Like, um, you know, the particular question that got posed by one of um, our um, audience members about anxiety and, and sort of the challenge there. And, and you know, I, I don't want <clears throat> to make any um, suppositions on their behalf, but I've seen other people that have had it. I, I had anxiety really bad as a as a kid. And I just remember everybody, you know, sort of you, you, there was just the stigmatism around it, right? Because people are, um, you know, when any, anything, especially in today's world, you know, although I think we're a little more sensitive to it than we might have been even five years ago. Uh, but the reality is there's this, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, shame around the concept and the and the topic of mental health and, and, you know, getting stressed out and having these anxiety attacks and, you know, people telling you there's no physical, there's nothing physically wrong with you. It's all mm -hmm. in here. And, you know, that, you know, one of the, the largest engine is in here. And of course, that's the biggest challenge for a lot of, a lot of people. If you're not taking care of that, and if you're not, you know, with someone who's along your side with you on that journey to help address those things, like you said, the low hanging fruit first, then starting to look at it, the other, other potential factors that could be creating uh, the challenges for you. Uh, you know, you, you end up defaulting a lot of times to either, um, dealing with it in probably in unhealthy ways, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, you know, isolation and loneliness, et cetera, or you go and, and you have a doctor that says, I got one pill to fix it all. Right. And, and put you on some sort of, uh, antidepressant, which has a whole different set of, you know, challenges with it. So, you know, when you, when you have someone that's actually stepping up to the plate to say, I, I want to. I want to address this for myself. What do you what do you recommend as maybe a first step to getting engaged in a conversation with someone like you? You know, what do they do to kind of get past that shame and, and fear? Yeah, I mean, great questions. I think that the first thing is just how courageous it is for people to take a step to acknowledge that they're having this. Yeah. And I will say, particularly for men in our culture, it's um it's an even like braver step because where patriarchy is brutal for women as a group, it's brutal for men as individuals, um, especially in regards to feeling anything other than anger. So when things like anxiety or depression come up, the first part is just acknowledging that it's courageous to, to tell another human being that that's something that you're experiencing. Yeah. I view as my role to create a space of non, non judgment. Um, so it's kind of my, my obligation to tr try to create a, space that people feel comfortable being as honest as possible. Like there's no TMI. I'm not going to be like, I'm not taking on the stuff. You're not going to hurt me. Like I can hear the worst. It's not, yep. you know, we're going to go in this together. Like we are, we are like partners in this. Um, so yeah, I think the first thing is just the, the courageousness of that. The second thing is often, again, that low hanging fruit. Like if it's, if it's depression or anxiety, like are, are there, are you getting the nutrients in your body? Like are yeah. you getting um, both food, nutrients, water. Is it a side effect of a medication you've just started? Um, are you moving your body? Are you getting out in nature? Like there, you know, there's some stuff like right away, these are things that can shift and change. Um, there's a quote, it's like an ancient Chinese saying that if you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. And if you're at peace, you're living in the moment. Oh, I love that. Way easier said than done, of course. <laughs> there is something really like resonant about that. And so, that true. of course, when people are like, I'm anxious, I'm not just like, well, you're living in the future. Stop doing that. Like, that's, <laughs> of course, not the advice. But there is something about encouraging people to build a tolerance for dis for discomfort. So, um, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about people who are like actively engaging with suicidal thoughts. Like, right, this, right. that is another area that we're talking yep. about here. So, so in the kind of realm of like um, normal, I'm going to use like big air quotes on that, yeah. uh, uh, anxiety, depression, mental health. I think sometimes we, we're not used to feeling any kind of discomfort. And so we think any kind of discomfort is bad. Any pang of hunger, we need to eat right away. Any pang of, you know, any little cold, we put on another jacket. Any little hot, yeah. we 
blast the air conditioning. And, you know, we're just, we're such a culture of comfort and that includes emotion. So I think some people maybe have started to feel like any sadness is not okay. And I would encourage people to, to build a greater threshold for sadness and fear and jealousy and anxiety and those kind of less desirable emotions. Yeah. You need to build more of a threshold for sitting with them and engaging with them and looking at them and talking to them and asking what they need from us because they're just messengers yeah. telling us that something's going on. So kind of like changing the way we engage with those feelings a little bit more can sometimes be helpful. Um, and then it's often like, are we living in line with who we want to be? If there's a big disconnect, then there's going to be a negative emotion that comes that's showing us there's a disconnect. If you're working at a job you hate and you're with a partner that you despise and you know, you're never working out and you don't like the way your body looks and you're eating crappy food all the time and you have a rough relationship with your family and you know, whatever, like if that's the life you're living and you've no hobbies and you just kind of watch reality TV show all day, every day, if there's anxiety and depression coming up, it's, it's something that you can look at and hopefully find the motivation and the support to make some changes. Um, so, so that those messengers don't need to keep coming at you louder and louder and louder to encourage you to make some changes. So that's, we kind of start there. I also, usually when people come in for anxiety, depression, et cetera, we're, we're past the point of, um, of doing a preventative practice mm -hmm. and preventative practices like breath work and meditation and starting those in a state of calm. I'm always like, you don't train for the Olympics the day before the Olympics. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you don't learn how to swim when you're in the water, like in the ocean over a boat. Like we want to be practicing these skills so that if I have a good breath work practice, a good meditation practice, then I can go back into that as a source of support yeah. when I'm feeling dysregulated. If I'm feeling dysregulated, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to meditate. Guess what? You're going to hate meditation. You're like, that was terrible. I just sat there and like wanted to claw my brains out for whatever, three minutes. So yeah. I would encourage you, um, even if you're feeling great right now, still please try to get some of these practices that are going to help you so much when the inevitable hardships come in life, because they, you know, they, they always do and they will, and that's part of it and that's okay. Yeah. You know what I, what I hear you really saying is that there's, there's a lot of value in asking yourself those questions, really, you know, having that inner dialogue with yourself to really get clear about what's going on and how certain circumstances are unfolding and then find someone like yourself that can actually help you navigate those, those waters, because there's no shame in doing that. There's, in fact, it's always a really good idea to have someone that is looking at you from more of a holistic perspective, trying to figure out potentially some of the challenges, because we do fall into a trap of, especially in our healthcare, you know, to, uh, you know, just defaulting to whatever the latest trend might be. Yeah. And we don't, we don't ask the, you know, the, the harder questions of ourselves or our, our health practitioners to really see what's going on. We just sort of take it and just say, this is the life I'm kind of, you know, being dealt and it doesn't have to be that way. I remember before I came to you, I, you know, I had serious bouts of insomnia, um, stress level was through the roof. And even though I felt like I was doing a better job because I meditate every day, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty well centered you were finding things that were like, mm, yeah, you can still do a little better here and you can do a little tweaking there. And, and just those, um, those inputs really helped me, you know, it helped me get on my game mentally. It helped me overcome my normal. Um, I've got, you know, sort of a crazy cycle of, you know, ebb and flow in terms of a you know, slight depression. And you were able to sort of navigate through those things with no judgment and, and really help me sort of look at things through a different lens that allowed me to try and help myself in those situations, which was really great. I also think that, I mean, you have an ability to be introspective in a way that's really cool. And even some of the questions <laughs> you pose to like the Ripple membership, right? Some of these like really thoughtful like, let's take some time to actually think about like who we want to be and be intentional about those choices and decisions. So I think that's going to serve, I mean, you so well and everyone who comes into contact with you because the questions you ask are so powerful. And what I wish that everyone had the benefit of is to, to have a witness with them while they're going through those questions, you know, to be safely witnessed by someone when you're going through a hard time and to kind yeah. of walk in somewhere with like, your like pocket of shame stuff and be like, this is my shame stuff. And 
to have someone be like, okay, yeah, I see your shame stuff. Yeah, like, let's look at it and unpack it together and, you know, no judgment. Let's just like, and then usually people are like, and then I also have this shame thing. You know, like, <laughs> you're like, okay, yeah. Like, let's let me go outside. Thing. I've got a big box yeah, yeah, of it like, in my okay, trunk, right? Like movers, come on in. We've got the shame. <laughs> but usually like when the body starts feeling comfortable that we're looking at those things, we're not just stuffing them away anymore. There's this, oh, it's so beautiful. There's this Mayan shaman, Martin Prachel, and he talks about in his culture, unshed tears are what they believe tumors are, are like consolidated unshed oh. tears. And I just think that's so beautiful to wow. be like, yes, like that's, we are stuffing and stuffing and stuffing emotion and feeling because we don't want to be inconvenient to people or we don't want to look emasculine or too vulnerable or, you know, we, we want to look really put together. We don't want people to feel sorry for us. Whatever we're telling ourselves, yeah. it is killing us. It's yep. really, really killing us. And it's, we're all living in these like pressure cookers and we need as many valve releases as we can get. Ideally, you're not putting more pressure on your body, but that's not always possible. So having as many outlets as possible, um, again, like acupuncture is one, but if that's not your thing, massage or therapy or um, swimming in Barton Springs, if you're in Austin, you know, whatever, whatever like your happy is, that's going to be really, really important for navigating a lot of this stuff. And I yeah. think, I think who the practitioner is really matters, you know, feeling like there's a, a group called heart math, M A T H. And they have done these really cool studies around, we co-regulate each other. And so like our heart and brain waves will start to sync up when we're in contact. And that could even happen from a distance. But, but that shows me like, who you're choosing to hold space for you is essential. It's yeah. tricky when you have like an HMO insurance plan, like it is, you get who you get and they're yeah. in there for 10 minutes and they're like, I don't know, what's your name? Like, um, that's really tricky to choose in those cases, but where you do have choice, I would encourage people um, to, to utilize that because who that person is, is going to allow you to be more comfortable. So, you know, bringing up smelly vaginal discharge or bringing up, you know, a rape in your past or bringing up, the fact that you, you know, have a lower libido or, you know, whatever those things are, you want a practitioner where you can say that, or you can yeah. talk about like, you know, I really actually think I'm a bad person at my core and having someone else hear that, just like discharging those words. Yep. Um, so a lot of this, like, again, anxiety, depression, these are, these are symptoms in the same way a knee pain or stomach pain or diarrhea are symptoms. They're just emotional symptoms of a larger, deeper issue that we want to work together to figure out the why so that yeah. people don't have to live like that. Like you're always with yourself. Um, and it should be this kind of really sweet relationship. I think we've talked about this. Like a lot of times I'll feel like I'm a marriage and family counselor, but it's like for you and you, you know, it's like yeah. you and your body. And I'm like, I think you're trying to say this. And I think they're hearing this and, you know, I'm like, come on. And like, but I, I'm like a terrible counselor. Cause I totally like I'm on the body side all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> Body. You know, I'm like not neutral, but, um, but I think what I want for all of us is for us to live in this body that feels coherent, like yeah. our mind and our emotions and our, our spirit and our body all feel aligned. And we all feel like we're on the same team together working for like our best good. And then we can show up for everyone better. You know, we can show up for each other professionally and personally and romantically and, and as a parent and all of that, we can just you know, just we're, we're more pleasant to be around. We spread joy more easily. All of that just, yeah. It, it's, I mean, maybe it's like my, my inner Pollyanna coming out, but I kind of love that part of me. It's like, we can do better and all of us can feel good. And like, you can too, I promise. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you definitely have made a huge difference in my life and I know in my wife's life as well, just in, in how you've looked and in, in just the patient heart centered approach that you take to it. I mean, the fact that you have a, a heart in your logo is ideal because <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. Let me switch gears for a second. You know, I mean, I love all of this and I could definitely talk to you. We'll definitely have to do a follow-up episode to this. Cause I think it's going to, uh, it's, it, we're going to get a good response on this for sure. We're going to get a lot of questions, but, um, what's the best thing about, you know, let me ask you some ripple specific questions. Okay. You, you, you talked about those. What, what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur from your perspective? Oh, I forgot to answer the entrepreneur part of your question. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, you answered it. I mean, you, you were answering it in a, in a, a very, very good way, but you know, more specifically as the business owner, cause you, you're out and doing this on your own. I mean, this yeah. is a, and, and, and very successful. Thank you. I, um, man, I love, I love what I do so much. It's like silly. Like I, um, I just love it. Like people are like, how are you? I'm like, I'm great. Like I get to come to the office and, see all these people that are so cool or new people and they're doing work and it's, I get to be part of it. And like, I leave blissed out and, um, and entrepreneur wise, like I just never get bored. I'm never bored because there's always something there's like, Oh, I fucked up that. Like, Oh, can I, <laughs> yeah, can I, okay. Um, <laughs> like there's always something I like messed up or some new thing I could learn or interesting people that I've met. Um, I think I'm a really good boss and yeah. a really good employee. So I'm like, wow, well done. Like, I'm always like, I should give myself like a best boss and best employee award. Um, <laughs> but I really love like getting to work with myself, if that makes sense. And yeah. there's so many challenges that are um, just like really fascinating. So I get both like left and right brain activation all the time. I also like for better or worse, just get to do whatever I want. <laughs> so like, <laughs> like, the, like this morning I saw this, I like love chips and salsa. It's like kind of embarrassing. Um, it's like, I'm, I'm not recommending that, but I just love it. And yep. there's this meme that was like, chips and salsa should be everywhere. Like you go to the bank and there's chips and salsa and you go to whatever, like, and you know, the, and I was like, damn. And so I sent it to a friend and they were like, you should have that at your office. And I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not going to, but I could. And that's the, like, for me, that's like, the, the best part of being an entrepreneur is like, if I wanted a chip and salsa bar in my office, I could have one. And it just, you could. I love that. Like I can wear whatever I want. Like I set the uniform and every now and then I'll get weird with myself. Like I'll be like, you should professional this way. And then I'm like, Oh, I should. And I like try to fit into that. And I'm like, why did I do that? Like that sucks. So I get to like watch myself run through all the stereotypes of what I yep. think I'm supposed to be as, you know, the owner of this company and, you know, the face of whatever and a doctor of Chinese medicine, I'm like, oh, I, I should, the shoulds creep in. And then I'm yeah. like, no. And I just get to do like whatever. And it feels so fun. And so, but again, I am also um, just one person. So like you, Steve was so great. You know, we had that this co the coaching call the other day and I was like, I have 10 million ideas. <laughs> and so I think because um, no one's here to be like, Jenna, stop, you're just one person. Um, I think that's maybe one of like the, the uh, my challenges is to be like, you just just chase a couple things at a time because I get really <laughs> fired up and excited so easily. Yeah, well, we had that call. I mean, you've got great ideas, you know, and but you know, you 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 probably do need a reminder from time to time. <laughs> You're just one person, so. I know. Uh, <clears throat> but that's the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship. You get to work on what it, what you want when you want it, and and yeah. deliver it the way that you want to deliver it, which is great. So I love. Right, it and I have support. no one telling me you can only spend X amount of time with someone, and I have no one telling me like you can't cuss in your treatment sessions. And I have no one telling me you can't use this, you know, herbal topical cause it smells what, you know, whatever. Like yeah. I, like I, there's this moxibustion is a Chinese technique. It's a modality for treatment. And I was using it and a client was like, Oh my God, I thought you were, that was weed when I was in the <laughs> office. And I was like, Oh my God. Like you thought I was just like smoking weed in my office. Like about to and so like, it was, and I'm like, and you came back like this, like you came back. Like how? So, um, <laughs> But my my favorite part is like I still get to use things that smell low key. They're not weed. It's not weed. It's not. Yeah. There's no marijuana in here. Um, but I I get to use things that smell that way, and then it's just funny. And a, no boss is going to be like, I told you not to use a thing that smells like weed. You know? And I'm yeah. like, oh, like it's just anyway. Don't make me write you up again. <laughs> I, know, I know. I should start writing myself up. Like, yeah. but anyway, I I just really really being an entrepreneur feels really cool. Like. I'm not a fan of ego death. I'm a fan of like ego integration. I don't yeah. know if that's what it's called. That's what I'm calling it. Where I'm like, I, feel, I get to feel like a bad. I'm like, yeah, I started this company and I have this office and like people come see me and I get to help them. And like, I did that. And I get this little like, oh, look at me. Like I, it feels so good. Yeah. And um, it feels so neat to be able to take it wherever I want. That just feels so nice. And, um, and it's not lonely because I get to collaborate with cool people like you and, you know, other people in the, in the Ripple community and other people in the broader community. And with like online coaching work, I can, you know, I was talking to someone in California earlier and Utah. And so it Love just it. makes me feel really, really free, which is, is such a core value for me.
Well, I think that's great. I mean, I think you're an inspiration to anyone that's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. They could learn a lot from you. What's the best thing a client or, you know, patient, I, I should say, patient or colleague or uh, a good friend could say about you? Hmm. Oh, that's a sweet question. <sighs> um. You know, I, a lot of people have said that I I love really aggressively, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and that's always a really sweet compliment. Like I, yeah. I'm just a. Uh, I think a client once said, "I love the client that said I was like a wellness dominatrix." So that kind of caught on, and I laughed about that. Um, and someone said that I was just their ferocious advocate, and I remember being like, "That feels really good to hear." Um, so there's something about this, like I just like really like ferociously want what's best for you and my clients. And um, and I think that comes with a sense of also softness and empowerment. And yeah. I think people like when people are like, you're the first person I've ever told X, Y, or Z, that to me is like, damn, they felt their nervous system felt confident enough to divulge this. And I'm a, like, these are people like in their seventies, they've never yep. told anyone. And I'm like, that to me feels like one of the most beautiful things ever. So um, some of the compliment is even more like, uh, it's like a feeling like you can, they're ner you can watch a nervous system settle and relax. That's probably the biggest compliment, but it's yeah. not through words. Like it's nothing anyone will say to you. It's just like, you just see it happen. And that's like, more beautiful than any like sunrise or sunset. I'm just like, oh, I love oh that. this system relaxing is just gorgeous. That's, I love that. That's fantastic. What do you think your superpower is? Hmm. <laughs> Probably being able to like rationalize anything, like, <laughs> which is like also a super curse. Um, <laughs> I think I don't, I think I just don't give up easily. Like I have a really tenacious mindset for like, we're going to figure this out. We're going to get this. We got this. We can do this. Like, yeah. it's just like, I'm like, mm, like, like a failure is just not an option. And I don't mean that in like a, like, yay, capitalism. I don't mean it that way, but it's like, we're going to figure this out. Like, this is a mystery and we are going to solve it and we got this. So yeah. I think like, I just have this like unwavering confidence in my ability to like get something done, even if I mess up along the way. Yeah. I, I felt that when I saw you, cause you're like, I got you. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That was just that level of confidence in the, you know, that, that strength that just says, Hey, I've landed at the right place, which, you know, is, is phenomenal. I, <clears throat> I remember actually introducing you to uh, Liz Hanlon, you know, and I, I she's said, so you spend five minutes with Jenna and you're going to be like hooked. And she's like, I don't know. I'm from Chicago. I'm really <laughs> I'm tough to impress. <laughs> and she calls me like, literally like, you know, the, you, know, you guys met for drinks or something. And she was like, Oh my God, <laughs> how did it take you that long to introduce us? Right. So your, your reputation precedes you. So, oh, I mean, your superpower so and your, uh, you know, people are talking about you, which is really good. Aww. What do you think the most important thing is in life? You're hitting me with the big questions. <laughs> I, um, I'm like, um, the most important. I need important to cue the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the Jeopardy music or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I reserve the right to change my mind. Um, but what's coming to me right now is, it's going to sound so cliche and cheesy, but what's coming to me is loving yourself, like yeah. really unapologetically loving yourself wherever you're at. Doesn't mean you don't decide to do better, but you just love yourself where you are um, because no one's ever hated themselves into loving themselves more and no one's ever hated themselves into being a better person. Right. So um, I remember I got, I wanted to get a tattoo. Um, I was married at the time. This is like, I don't know, 10 years ago, probably. Um, and I wanted to get a tattoo that said good enough. And um, my ex didn't like tattoos. So I, I, even though I have them, but anyway, I got a necklace that said, good, I had it made, it said good enough. And, um, and he was like, I hope that doesn't apply to me. And my best friend was there and he goes, mine's better than nothing. <laughs> you know, cause my <laughs> ex was like, mine's never enough. And my best friend's like, mine's better than nothing. And I'm like, ah, good enough feels right. Like we want to sense that like we're good enough as we are that's the most important thing. Again, it doesn't mean you don't strive to be better and, and whatnot, but this just kind of like confidence in who I am is like divine and wonderful exactly now. Yeah. Um, that's what I want for everybody. I love that. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> what would you like the next five years to look like for your business and for your life? 
I, um, hmm, a lot of chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> I should have started there. Aside from the chips and salsa, and, yeah. you know, just an endless supply of that just yeah. being mainlined. People just bring me chips and salsa. Yeah. Um, no, please don't. I'm like trying to stop. But um, <laughs> I, I would have to say business-wise, I love empowering people and I love people learning. I love because these these are this is not rocket science. This is like so applicable. Um, and I love when like I find out other people were sharing this advice with other people. Like, yes, I want that. So I do see more public speaking um, coming my way yep. uh, just because I just love that. And I love the one on one, but I um, I can't one on one as many people as I can public speak uh, more people. Um, that's not the, a real English sentence, but we're going to make it work. Totally um, got it, though. We understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I think that will kind of happen. Um, I hope the the aggressive self care cards only continue to go. Like that yep. product Ooh. stuff just feels like so fun to me. Um, and then I just I really like where I'm at with my business. Like yeah. I I I love my office. I would love to stay here. Um, you know, I see myself just meeting more and more really cool, interesting clients who are focusing on self-care. I, I really like, I mean, you've heard me say this, I have the, the best clients in the world. Like I, I am so lucky. They're just, the, I look at my calendar every day and I either don't know people and I'm excited or I'm like excited to see the people I know. Yeah. Um, so I just, I kind of see that staying like where I, I just, I love, I love the flow that I have right now. Um, I would love to do figure a way to travel, like do acupuncture at like retreats or something, but yeah. the logistics around licensure, I'm not sure about, but I'm like, man, get me to like, you know, Columbia on some like <laughs> yoga retreat as your acupuncturist, like all day, every day. Um, but again, I'd have to figure that out. So I don't know if that will happen in five years, but I think like the public speaking and, um, and some of these more like kind of product things feel pretty exciting. Yeah. Based on the list we went through, uh, I think you're going to definitely have a busy five years for sure. So With like let me ask you, <laughs> what's that? With tons of self-care. With tons of self-care. Yeah. yeah. And, and probably chips and salsa. Let's just be <laughs> yes. The two are the same potato. Yeah, potato. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. So let me ask you this question. So what, in your opinion, does the ripple effect mean to you? Hmm. I think what you embody, so, I mean, obviously like the ripple effect is broader than you, but I feel like you also embody it so much. And to me, it's, it's deep connection. So it's, um, I think your ability specifically to see two people and be like, like match make them like professionally is just uncanny. Like you're so good at that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's what it means is this really the sense of like, we are all interrelated. Everything we do impacts each other. And let's do that intentionally. Let's impact each other intentionally with, with the, the purpose to Im impact each other positively with intention. That's what it, I think that's what I would have to say about it. Uh, I'd lo I love that. I love that. Well, so I <clears throat> would like to finish with one question. So what kind of ripple can I create for you in the upcoming year? Your questions are so sweet. <laughs> like all of them are like, I want to know your answer too. Um, <laughs> I, let's see. I mean, I think what you're doing, like you have been so lovely connecting me with people that you feel um, I would learn from or who might learn from me. And all of those connections have been so wonderful. Um, I think just keep being you on it. Just like, no, this is so cheesy, but just like knowing you exist is like makes my world better. So I'm like, oh, he's just out there doing great stuff. Ah, uh, thank you. I, yeah. I need that on my brochure. <laughs> <laughs> just being me. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I love that. No, thank you very much. I mean, I it goes without saying. I mean, you've brought so much to my life, and I am so grateful that not only I found you from a health perspective, but also just us having this really great friendship that has really blossomed. I'm I'm really honored by it, and it's easy to want to help good people doing good things in the world. And you're creating a, an unbelievable amount of ripples out there and more to come. I mean, so I'm so grateful to, you know, to, to be uh, spinning in your orbit. Ah, oh, thank you. It feels really good. This is, I, I honestly, like what I get to do every day feels like magic. Um, <laughs> and awesome. getting to see people feel better and, and just like, you know, kind of be on their team, like, like being in their wellness corner with them, yep. just it's really, truly an honor for me to do and and witness and see and um, 
I can't, I, I'm so glad that I, I am in this world and in your world and, and hopefully getting to meet more and more people who are interested in health and wellness. Yeah. Well, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and you see some people that are destined to do what they are doing and other people that are just doing it to do it. Mm. You are destined for what the work that you are. It's perfectly aligned and it comes out in everything you do. So uh, just keep up the good work. Aww. How does everybody, um, how would you like people to learn about you from, you know, whether it's your website or social, what's the best cool. way you've got this, you know, great following on YouTube with your, your <laughs> colleagues. So, I mean, yeah, share it all. So, so yeah, I guess like probably I'm most active, I would say on Instagram. Um, my, my business name Valentine care was taken. So it's Valentine care wellness is on Instagram. Um, and I kind of like, I have no social media. I am the social media person and it's mostly stuff that I find funny. <laughs> so um, hopefully you do too. Yeah, it's um, it's really, and... <laughs> you have a future as a, a comedian if you decide that you're going to hang up the. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I just, I just like laughter is medicine also. Yeah, um, but sure. I, it's mostly literally like my social media campaign is like, <laughs> that's funny repost with like a funny <laughs> emoji that also makes me laugh. Um, yeah. And also hopefully helpful too. Like, you know, I try to keep them helpful. And so that's, and then people can message me on there if they want. My website is just valentinecare.com. Um, you can see like videos and, you know, stuff on there, scroll through, read as much as you want if you're more of like that format. Um, I also do free 15 minute consultation calls. So if people want to reach out to me, they're welcome to, and we can see if it's a good fit that way. So, yep. Because again, who your practitioner is matters, especially if they are going to potentially put needles in your body. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure like, like they're at least kind of cool. Um, so my email is um, um, valentinecarewellness at Gmail, or you can do info at valentinecare. <laughs> so anyway, but probably Instagram is going to be the best way to like direct okay. message me. The website has a way you can do a contact me button. Um, and I'm sure they can go through you as well if they want like yep. to text my my business cell phone or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll put all your links up in the video and obviously we'll uh, include it in the show notes for those people that are just catching this on the audio. But Jenna, thank you so much for being a part of the the show today. Um, it, it was an absolute pleasure to have this opportunity to, to dig a little bit deeper and and hear, you know, your motivation and your inspiration and sort of what you're what you're doing in the world. It's so important and so critical and so grateful that, uh, you know, we get an opportunity to to share this with a, a wider audience. Cause I, I think people, especially people that are in Austin, you got to go check out what Jen is doing. I think you'll be really, really amazed uh, to spend a little bit of time with her and you'll be hooked. I promise. So, Aww, you know, as you. always, I, I, you know, we'll be back with another episode of the ripple effect podcast very soon, but until then, Jenna ripple on. Thank you guys. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.